Uh, I had the most incredible luck that way. Um, while I was actually with my unit um, during my first tour, nothing happened. I left for two weeks. Uh, I went on R&R, &R, and while I was gone, they got in this horrendous firefight and uh, fell in. My squad was killed. And uh, when I came back, uh, we never had anybody else hurt again while I was there. Never even wounded or scratched. It was just almost eerie luck. Were you, were you close with the gentleman that was killed? He is actually one of the guys who came over with me. His name was Jimmy Nalen. He was from uh, Talladega, Alabama, I believe. Southern kid. And we had some really interesting conversations because uh, for a lot of people um, in the military, they hadn't really had any ex uh, interaction with people of, of, you know, another race. You know, I remember a kid saying in, in basic one time that until then he'd never eaten at the same table as a black person. And... Uh, in the infantry units especially, there was a large proportion of Latino and black uh, uh, people. So everybody got to know each other a lot better. And we'd talk about the way things were in his hometown in Alabama and like that. And uh, he was a, a southern man of his generation and his uh, area, you know, the way things were in his home. But he was also an honest kid a nice kid. His best friend turned out to be a black kid from Texas uh, named Jim Branch. And they used to joke about being brothers, you know, and they really were. And then um, Jim, the way he died, the company was walking, this is a story I was told when I was back, they were in line of ducks through these rice paddies, which we often were. and. Uh, they came to this village which had a, a tree line surrounding it and there were 40 NVA lined up along this tree line. They opened fire and they uh, hit this kid, another black kid who was a replacement. He wasn't actually hit but he bullet had grazed him and he panicked and fell on the ground and was screaming that he was hit and like this. Well, Jim Nalen ran out there, grabbed him, threw him over his shoulder, ran back to Rice Paddy Dyke, threw him over the other side, and then took a bullet right in the head. So, if I've got this story right, a man who grew up in the Deep South with, you know, probably never having any interaction with black people or, and probably grew up with a lot of antipathy towards black people, died trying to save Black. He died saving this kid's life. That's what, like, when people used to complain to me about you know white people are no good or this kind of thing, I, I I had to tell them that story, you know that here was a guy and exactly like you said he was a southerner. He didn't. I remember him telling me that when black people came to his house, they went to the back door, and when he went to visit a black person, he went to the back door, you know, and then here he is. A man brought up in an environment like that, and he gives his life, you know, saving a black man's life. Uh, we were all soldiers rather than having any racial consciousness, but um, uh, that story is always one I think of when I hear somebody giving out with a, a racist line.